Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, welcome back to a Megon 2 Electric Boogaloo. On the 22nd of July 2022, I made a video titled Exclusions for Trans Athletes Continues. In that video, we spoke about some people who are being not permitted under UK law and other governing bodies, Olympic related ones especially, from competing in certain events, because many are starting to believe that the science might not be what they think it means in the sense that those biological advantages many accuse some of having are existent and therefore a third event should probably be considered or just remove the men's one entirely and just title it open because men can't have their own space everyone everyone just just don't roll your eyes it'll look remarkably patronizing <laughs> For the sake of context, I'm going to link my previous video covering this kind of topic down below in the pinned comment, along with sources for today's video. The reason I mention it is because more discussion has taken place, but this time further in the United Kingdom up north in Scotland. The reason why is because Scotland has not banned trans women from full contact rugby with biological females. Rugby chiefs in Scotland in turn have come under fire for allowing women and girls to go up against male-bodied transgender players in a move that many critics say could seriously injure female-born athletes. Scotland is the only country within the United Kingdom because yes, UK is not one country, it's four nations bound together, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, to allow transgender women to compete in full contact rugby. The other three nations have changed the rules to say that only people born as women can compete in women's matches. This does handily tie into the last video I did on this because we spoke of a trans rugby player who competes in the disabled one with wheelchairs, who complained there were no biological advantages and I had to point out, that's not surprising, when one partakes in rugby, you expect tackling, not wheels to lock up. Tonia Antoniazzi, a Labour MP and former women's rugby player, demanded that Scotland's policy be scrapped. Being quoted as saying, we're talking about a high-impact sport with full-blooded games. You cannot just apply the mantra of being kind or that trans women are women to rugby. It has to be sex segregated. The fact that there are trans women in Scotland playing women's rugby I find absolutely appalling. It should not be happening. There are already enough risks. What I find fascinating about those comments are Currently, Tonya serves as a shadow minister for Northern Ireland. She's the incumbent for the Labour Party. To speak up on this issue seems counter to where Labour have been usually found, and also might get her into trouble with the party who are themselves trying to, at the best of times, appease those on the left and those further on the left. Much like the Conservatives when it came to Brexit, some being more centre-right, more hard-right, and some who are just all over the place. Labour have similar issues when it comes to those that are considered more progressive policies. This does not help them, especially if those remarks were not vetted by, well, higher-ups, yeah. The only thing that might save Tonya in this one is that she's female, and therefore, Keir Starmer might not want to have one of his harem of women that sit around him during peer queues be yeeted somewhere else and replaced by a man. We should also add, at present within Scotland, there are only two trans players who are actively involved with Scottish clubs. And it should also be added that Scottish rugby has refused to say if the pair played in competitive matches or not. The current rules insist that female players cannot be told if they will be competing against a male-bodied opponent, which means they don't have a chance to back out of a game over safety fears. Under the current agreement, clubs found to be breaking the strict confidentiality rule face the prospect of disciplinary action. Considering how aggressive rugby is, this does raise a number of alarm bells. If you've never seen a game of rugby, think American football with less stops and more touching. And by touching, we mean full body spears, gores everywhere, rhino, everyone's rhino, okay? Now, a spokesperson for Scottish Rugby has said that Scottish Rugby is in the process of reviewing its existing gender participation policy in the light of emerging guidance. That's a cute way of putting it. 
we are currently having conversations with members of the rugby community who could be most affected by any change to the policy to help us understand views across this subject. At present, trans women and girls can be given the green light to take to the pitch in full contact matches as long as their testosterone levels fall below a certain level for one full year. This stance goes against that of the sport's international governing body, World Rugby, which in October 2020 said that trans women who have started male puberty should not be allowed to compete in women's games, with the organization deeming the risk to female-born players as unacceptably high. That confidentiality agreement though, am I right people? Screw your science when it suits my agenda. That's cute. Within the United Kingdom there has been a bit of a running gag. The running gag concerns Scotland always having to do things their own way, or do it in their own time. If the UK government ordered them to do something, they would still ignore it for the most part. The reason why is because Scotland have their own scientists. They're outsourced from the United Kingdom, but they have their own scientists. I am of course joking, don't be that person. In this instance, they are intentionally attempting to subvert what everyone else has said, or is acting on, to do things their own way. S-G-T-O-W. Scotland going their own way, but without the independence referendum yet. Which I'm sure they'll get at some point, no doubt of it, if Labour gets into power with a minority government in two years time. You never know. There are a number of articles covering this down below, but the one thing I noticed about every single one of them is that they all are copy-paste of each other. And because of that, there isn't much more information that I can add to this subject beyond what we've discussed so far. I do want to know though what people think about when it comes to contact sports, especially trans women competing in these sports. I know someone will undoubtedly point out what about trans men, don't be that person, alright, we're not going down this discussion, you know better than I do I'm sure. But I really want to know because I want to see if any healthy discussion can take place because of it, not just my usual responses that are short because I reply to everyone, okay? And I will be engaging with you so I do actually want to know what you think. Thank you.